Welcome to the Fermented Homestead. If you're new here, my name is Anna, and on this channel, I'm sharing our journey of learning how to turn our home into a homestead. Welcome to Jam It Up June. This is a collaboration that's being put on by Tony over at Kettle Kitchen. Tony has gathered up quite a group of a lot of different creators and I'm super pumped to be a part of it and we I am going to be making a mango jalapeno jam we are going to be using a low sugar recipe with our Pomona's pectin and we are going to be covering them with our lovely wonderful four jars canning lids which I freaking love so we're actually going to be going based on the recipe that came in here we are going to be making like I said mango jalapeno jam and we're going to be using the low sugar amount so we are going to be using it calls for four cups of mashed or simmered fruit a quarter of a cup of lemon or lime juice a half of a cup to one cup of honey or a third three quarters of a cup to two cups of sugar that's what we're going to be using and three tables to three teaspoons pardon me of pectin and four teaspoons of calcium water so the first thing that we have to do is actually prepare our calcium water. And when you open up these Pomona pectins, you're gonna have the actual pectin, which is the big envelope, and there's gonna be a small pack, packet. You can see, if you forget, it shows on here, this is pectin and then calcium. So what we need to do is actually prepare our calcium water. So you put a half of a teaspoon of calcium powder into a half of a cup of water with a lid, and then shake it up and kind of leave it until you're ready for it. You want to basically want to give it time to dissolve. And my understanding also is that you can you can save that calcium water for later. And we have the jars uh, back on the stove and they are sanit sterilizing, sanitizing, I don't know what you call it, but uh, we have them in uh, boiling water. It is in a pressure canner, but it's not sealed. It's not pressure canning. I'm just, that's the pot that I'm using because that's the biggest pot that I have. So that's gonna be our water bath. So it calls for, for the mango, it calls for four cups of mashed or simmered fruit. I should have bought these a few days ago instead of a week ago. So some of these are looking a little bit uh, crinkly. Basically, we are just gonna peel, these, peel this fruit. We're gonna get our four cups of fruit. If I think I have enough to do eight cups of fruit or six cups of fruit, we'll just adjust the recipe accordingly because I don't want to have a bunch of mangoes left over. I just bought what I guessed would be an appropriate amount of mangoes because I have no idea. And we're just going to peel the mangoes. That's it. And I'm in, I'm in a temporary kitchen right now and I don't have all of my normal kitchen tools. So I don't have um, like a masher or anything like that. So we're just going to dice the mango really finely with a knife. I do have a Vitamix, but I don't want to make this into a case. I'd like to have some chunks to it. So. We're gonna avoid using blender for today. Change my mind. I'm not doing this. I'm gonna do a little bit. I'm gonna do one mango in chunks. The rest I'm blending. This is stupid. A food processor would probably be the better tool for this, but this is what I got. So, everything else is in storage. This actually ended up being pretty much the perfect amount. I had two mangoes. Well, I had one mango that was very obviously not one I wanted to use. Hopefully that comes through on camera. And then one, where I was just like, I might probably not want to use that one. And then a third one that definitely I only used parts of it. So um, I should have bought them a few days ago, but other than that, they were perfectly fine. So we're just gonna mix all of this up and then we're just gonna set aside the appropriate amount, four cups, and then uh, we're just gonna go from there. Okay, so I think we're gonna do five jalapenos and then I'm gonna set aside the other jalapenos for just something else. We're not gonna take the seeds out cups of fruit so we're gonna do a one and a half times of the recipe 
So for this one, we have four cups of master simmered fruit. So we have six cups of that. And then we'll do three eighths of a cup of the lemon juice and probably one and a half cups of sugar. Yeah, one and a half cups of sugar. So I'm losing my track here. Um, and then, yeah, we'll just, I'll do, the, we'll do, I'll do the math in just a second. I don't want to do it off on the fly. So I'll do the math, like actual math and then, but we're not changing the recipe. We're just doing the one and a half times of the recipe. It's not going to be, none of the ratios are going to be different. I'm, I don't like to change water bath recipes. I'm not comfortable with it. Add the proper amount of calcium water. So if we're doing a one and a half times batch, it calls a single batch calls for four teaspoons. So we're going to do six teaspoons, which is just two tablespoons. Okay. So we're going to warm this up to a boil and just kind of on like a medium, medium high kind of heat. I'm going to clean this up a little bit so everything's not all sticky. And then we're going to mix up the, um, the peg. We have six cups of fruit and then we're going to add in about two cups of sugar. So I have, uh, according to math, that's eight jars. That's why I have eight jars. Really, I have eight jars because that's how many I could find. But it just happened to work out. So we are mixing up our pectin mixture. I'll show you what we're going to do with that. We're going to take our one and a half cups. There's a range in here with the sugar. You can be a little bit, um, picky. You can do it with one within the range of this. So I'm doing it about one and a three, one and a two thirds cup. Okay. Then we're going to take our pectin and it says to do three teaspoons of pectin, which is a tablespoon. So we're going to do a tablespoon and a half of the pectin. And it says you want to mix it in with your sugar. Four teaspoons and a half. And we're just going to mix it in. Basically the idea behind this is to prevent the pectin from plumping. Okay. That should be plenty. Now I'm going to move you over here. We're going to go ahead and we're going to bring this mixture to a vigorous boil. Okay. Almost forgot the lemon juice. Make sure you're using bottled lemon juice. It does say that you have to add this. So it is um, a part of um, the recipe. And you do want to add uh, the bottled lemon juice because it's more of a consistent acidity level. You wanna make sure you're stirring it fairly regularly to make sure it doesn't scorch on the bottom of the pot. You don't have to babysit it like I am, but with this open flame, I don't think it's gonna take very long. I think that's good enough. I'm gonna add in the sugar, stir it in for a few minutes. Okay. I think we're good. Okay, so the next step, we are gonna just uh, ladle this into our jars with a quarter inch of headspace. We're in transition, so I don't have everything I need for this, so that's why I'm using this weird spoon. Okay, so next up, we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna debubble these, and then we're gonna double check it to make sure that they are at a quarter inch of headspace. And this step is probably not completely necessary because there's nothing really to debubble, uh, but good, good practice. There's no harm to it, so it's good to have a good practice. Sorry if the view's funky, but there's crap everywhere because we're we're gonna be moving here. We're at an Airbnb that we've been at for two months, and we're just getting ready to move, so things everywhere. So we have our white vinegar. Your paper towel. I'm just gonna wipe the rim, right? Wipe all the rims. I wish jam was not quarter inch headspace. It's so hard. Why can't we just do half inch? It's so much easier. 
I'm going to get all the particles off the rim and all the sugar to make sure that there's nothing stopping it from sealing. I feel like I filled these too full, but I didn't. Oh, this is why I hate quarter inch. I feel like it's too full, but it's not. Lovely four jars of lids here. Okay. And then we're gonna put uh, these on fingertip tight, and that's as tight as you can get them with these three fingers. The fingertips, I should say. You don't want to crank it. You're just using it like a torque wrench, almost like, like just the fingertips. All right, and then into the canner. really good. I just realized I don't have to wait to do the taste test. This is pretty good. It is it is definitely not overly sweet, obviously. But it's already starting to gel. It has a good flavor. You want to try this? Come on. <laughs> Lick the spoon. Come on. You can do it for me. He hates licking this spoon. It's a pretty muted flavor yeah. in my opinion, but it's okay. got a good flavor. It has a do that. decent heat. That works. I think this would be really good on, um, that works. and he's allergic to mangoes, um, but he can have cooked mangoes and these are, these are cooked. Um, if not, he would be running to the bathroom already uh, to throw it up, but. Right, I could try that. Yeah. And I didn't upset oh. your belly at all? Hmm? Didn't upset your belly at all? Okay. Um, Cause I did cook this for a good long time. So he can, he can have cooked mangoes, but this is really good. It's not oh, super really? like sickeningly sweet, but I think this would be really good on pork. What do you, do you think? Yeah. 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 This would be really delicious on pork or chicken or really anything. I can't even. Duck. Oh, duck. I don't know what duck tastes like, but I bet it would be good on duck and we're gonna find out. Um, okay, so I have a live stream I have to get to in about four minutes, which I have not even begun the prep for. So sorry in advance for what happened a while ago, uh, <laughs> if I'm late, but we have our water bath going here. We're gonna bring it up to a rolling boil and we are going to process it. Once it hits the rolling boil, we're gonna process it for 10 minutes. Once the 10 minutes is up, we're gonna turn the heat off, take the lid off and leave it set for another five minutes. And then we'll take it out and put it on like a padded, like a thick cloth kind of surface uh, because we have these stone countertops. So it can, it can, you don't want to have any kind of uh, breakage. So we're going to put on a nice thick terry cloth towel on the countertop and, um, and just let them cool down naturally. So. Oh my goodness. It's been a few days since we can canned up our mango jalapeno deliciousness jam. And so I figured I would just bring you back and let you guys know, of course, all six of these jars ended up sealing and it is delicious. I know that you guys saw at the end, um, we did go ahead and finish off all that was left in the pan. There was about maybe a half of a jar. So probably like a half of a cup left in the bottom of the jar. I had a little taste test of it. I didn't want to have too much sugar, but my husband did and he took all the rest of it, smeared it on top of his toast and walked off with it quite a content man. So um, I hope that you guys will give this a try. It is freaking delicious. If you want to go ahead and make this a little bit sweeter after you can it, when you're putting, when you're opening up the jar, you could add a little bit more sugar to it or some honey. You could add some stevia to it. You could add some monk fruit 
huge, but for me, it's plenty, plenty sweet and I really enjoy it. And you can also, I went on the low end for the sugar. All of the instructions to make the jam are inside of the packet of the Pomona's pectin. Sorry, that's a little challenging to say. I'm gonna go ahead and leave a link for the four jars down below. It is going to be an affiliate link and you can get a discount using that link and the code fermented 10. Uh, four jars is a wonderful company. I love partnering with them. And I think that you guys will really love the, the lids as well. I have been using these almost exclusively since the like mid January and I have still yet to have a single failed seal and I can quite a lot. So that is definitely saying something. These are fantastic, fantastic lids and I hope that you guys check these out. Also, make sure that you check out down below, I'm gonna link to all of, the diff channel all of the different channels that are taking part in this collaboration and you're gonna wanna check out, there's a new video every day of the month until the end of the month and there's gonna be special giveaways all throughout the month. I think you, I'm about midway through the, through the month, I believe. And so we've already had some giveaways, I think, and we'll have more coming up and he's doing a live stream at the end. So make sure that you check out Tony's channel, Kettle Kitchen, and then all the other channels are gonna be linked down below. Check them out, subscribe, watch some of their videos. There's some great channels, big, small, everywhere in between. There's just a huge selection of channels that are taking part in this collaboration. If you are interested in finding some new channels, finding some new inspiration, this is definitely a good collaboration for you guys to be keeping track of, so make sure that you do. If you guys enjoyed this video and you want to see more, I like to do all kinds of videos on food preservation. I like to do freezing, canning, dehydrating, fermenting, as well as showing you guys how you can actually use the food in your pantry to cook with and make delicious meals with. If that sounds interesting to you guys, check out this link. This is a link to subscribe to my channel right there. Up here is a video Mr. Google Pants thinks that you're going to enjoy. Right here is a video that is on another canning a jam recipe and up here is gonna be my canning playlist. Make sure you check that one out for all kinds of awesome inspiration. So thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time, bye.